Hey y'all, I'm Tamara and welcome to my channel. I am so happy to have you here today because this is my very first video of 2021 and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my favorites from 2020. Even though it was not a great year overall, I think we can all agree on that, there were some really amazing launches from makeup to skincare to hair care to books to TV. So I definitely wanna highlight my favorites of the year and I wanna hear what yours were too. So please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorites were. Also, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell because I would love to have you back. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna start with my favorite category, which is skincare. So the first new product that really struck me for the whole year is the Necessaire Body Serum. I've never tried a body serum, but this is phenomenal. It's got hyaluronic acid and it is so good, especially right now for that really dry winter skin. Y'all definitely check this out. It is so good. Next, Tower 28 is one of my favorite brands. Y'all know I've talked about them quite a bit. And this is their Daily Rescue Facial Spray, which is the SOS or Save Our Skin. Yeah, Save Our Skin. It is such a good mist. I'm constantly misting, especially now that I'm working from home. It's really nice because I keep my lip balm, my face mist, my, um, my hand lotion. I keep everything right there with me while I'm working so that I can stay hydrated, stay moisturized, drink my water. Love it. So good, y'all. Um, I also discovered this really amazing um, cleanser. It is the Mamond, Mamond Micro Deep Cleansing Foam. This is a K-Beauty product. I think I got it in the subscription box, but honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. Might have been a gift, might have been in a subscription. But y'all, this is so good for mask me. It is so bad. Y'all know we're all suffering from it when you have to go out in a mask. Where I live, it's still pretty warm. It's like in the 70s during the day. So when you're wearing a mask, especially if you put on makeup, you do break out. And this has been so good for cleansing my skin and really helping with breakouts. I am definitely going to repurchase this. Don't remember where I got it, like I said, but I will be buying it again. Next, I fell in love with the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. I am an oily girl, and like I mentioned, it's pretty warm, pretty humid where I live, so the regular silk canvas doesn't really work that great for me, except when it's really dry in the middle of the winter. Um, my makeup tends to slip because my skin just gets so oily. But the liquid silk canvas is phenomenal. It is so good, absolutely loving it. So if you have oilier skin and you wanna use the silk canvas, this is probably the best option for you. Next, I am obsessed with the Peter Thomas Roth Firm X Peeling Gel. This is such an amazing, amazing exfoliator. It is super gentle. It just like kind of gently peels, gently exfoliates, gently smooths, gives you that nice clean surface, nice clean canvas, but it doesn't irritate my skin. So I am really loving this stuff. Um, I think this one was either gifted or in a subscription, like I mentioned, but I will definitely be repurchasing. Next, I love Youth to the People. They are one of my all-time favorite skincare brands and their Dream Eye Cream is so good. Y'all, this stuff is amazing. It's smoothing, it's hydrating, it kind of minimizes the look of those fine lines around your eyes. I love it. And y'all, I'm not opening these products because these are all things that are in my daily rotation. They're things I use all the time. So they're kind of, you know, they're not in the best pristine shape. All right. Next, I love the Juice Beauty Green Apple Age Defy Hand Cream. It is so good, I'm almost out. Definitely gonna have to buy this one again. This one was actually gifted, but I love it. It smells good, it really does help, it hydrates. Um, love it so much. Next, onto lip care, I love the Laneige Lip Sleeping Masks. They are so good. I love every flavor. I think my favorite is actually Lemon Sorbet. I should have grabbed that one, but I grabbed Vanilla. They're all good, y'all. They all work the same, but the lemon just smells so good. Also, I love the Tatcha Kisu Lip Mask. It is so beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, and it also works really, really well. So this is an amazing lip mask. 
Then onto sunscreen, I am loving the Super Goop Glow Stick Sunscreen SPF 50. It was so good all summer. Um, definitely remember to wear your sunscreen even now when you're outside, y'all. Even when it's winter, even when it's fall, you still want to make sure you're protecting your skin. But this one is just really good. It's beautiful and I really enjoyed it over the summer. Next, I'm loving the Summer Fridays Overtime Mask. It is beautiful. I wish that I could squeeze some, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it is just so good. It's like um, exfoliating and it just, it makes my skin super smooth. Definitely enjoying it. I'm also loving the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dewdrops. These are very new, but they are very good. Love them so much. The Josie Marin Whipped Argan Oil Face Butter is also one of my favorites. I love using this as a sleeping mask at night. It is so good and it just really leaves my skin feeling so hydrated, so fresh, so moisturized. It is amazing. Next, y'all know how much I love First Aid Beauty. They're one of my all-time favorite skincare brands and they came out with this ultra repair oil control moisturizer which is so good for oily girls like me. I love it. It is really nice and um, it's really lightweight. I was really surprised by how well it works under makeup but it really does help to control that oil. Love. I'm also loving the Pixie Skin Treats Overnight Retinol Oil. I am over 40, as I have mentioned before. And so um, I am loving anything with retinol, trying to get a little bit softening of those lines around my eyes, on my forehead. And this one really does the trick. Okay, so moving on now to makeup, my second favorite category. There were so many good palettes that launched this year and so many good palettes that I tried for the first time. Um, the first makeup palette that I want to show is the Viseart Neutral Matte Eyeshadow Palette. This is not a new one, but it's new to me. I just recently got it and it is so good. I love Viseart's eyeshadow formula. It is amazing, so buttery, so creamy, so rich. And these are just the perfect neutral matte colors for me. They are warm toned, which I love. And I'm wearing it right now. I'm actually using probably three different palettes right now, um, but I love it. It's just gorgeous and they blend so well. Next, I totally fell in love with the Natasha Denona Bronze Palette. I love me some Natasha Denona and this one is stunning. These colors are totally my shades. Y'all know I love my warm tones and I love how she's got so many different really nice finishes. So it is just so good. Next is the Pat McGrath Labs Celestial Divinity Palette. Um, this one is not that old, but y'all, I have gotten so much use out of it. It is just the most gorgeous palette. These colors are so pretty, but you know, you can do a really neutral look, really versatile. Um, you can go glam, you can, you know, just kind of do a fun, colorful look. I think there's so much you can do with it. And this is like one of the larger palettes. Um, it has the most shades that she has put out in any palette, but it is probably my all time favorite Pat McGrath palette. Just absolutely loving it. And I use it all the time. Y'all can tell that all of these products I'm showing you are very well loved. Next, I know some of this stuff I'm showing is a little bit on the higher end side, but you guys, I do not discriminate when it comes to makeup or skincare. If it works well, I will recommend it. I will use it. I will repurchase it. And one of my favorite finds this year are these little bitty, I think they're called, yeah, bite size, <laughs> elf bite size palettes. They are so affordable, y'all but they're so good. Like the quality is comparable with Natasha Denona. I mean, please don't tell her I said that, um, but they're just really good. They're so buttery and they blend so well. And the formula is so smooth and they go on nicely and there's so many colors. So you can buy like the whole, I, I think the entire collection probably for like less than $40, maybe less than 30. I don't know. I think they're either somewhere between three and $5 each. So these are my favorite affordable makeup pick of the entire year, 2020. Next, back to a little bit higher end palette. 
The Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes palette is, Naughty Nude, is literally a work of art. This is probably the most gorgeous palette I've ever seen, aside from those that have like the pretty imprints. You all know what I'm talking about. But just like as a regular makeup palette, this is stunning. I am so in love with it. This is, I mean, it's a work of art. But it's also really good quality, y'all. So I highly recommend that. It works so well, so pretty. Love the formula, love the colors. Okay, next, y'all know how much I love Laura Mercier. And the illuminators are so good. I think these are just called, yeah, they're just called face illuminators. And Indiscretion is my favorite. This one has been very, very well loved. Um, they're just so pretty. They look really natural. They blend really easily, really buttery, really creamy. Absolutely love. Also on the topic of highlighters and illuminators, I love me some hourglass and I like in the holiday time when they come out with these, um, ambient lighting edits. This one is the new one from 2020, which is called Sculpture Unlocked. But I like the ones that are like this, that are a little bit more shimmery versus those, um, the ones that are more like uh, natural looking, I forget what they're called. But this is my favorite finish of the Hourglass and I love these little quads. I have a couple of the smaller palettes because you've got the bronzer, you've got the blush, and then you've got the highlighters. So it's just a really, really pretty finish with these. Love them. Okay, back to Laura Mercier. So I discovered these Secret Brightening Powders for Under Eyes. This was actually gifted to me and y'all, I cannot get enough. I think this is my third jar because I go through these so much. Amazing. So basically like I'll bake under my eyes with these after I do my concealer and they really do help to brighten, kind of open up, make me look a little bit more awake. Absolutely amazing powder. So it's a little bit different from the normal setting powder, the translucent setting powder, which is my all-time favorite, but um, I love this. I recommend this in addition to the setting powder. Okay, so for blush, I am so in love with Patrick Ta Makeup. These blushes are gorgeous. Um, I have a couple of them. I think this shade is called She's Sincere but you can't go wrong. I mean, just pick whatever color you like and they just blend beautifully. The colors are so pretty and they're just gorgeous. Also, I am loving this little Natasha Denona Bloom Highlighting Blush. I think this might be a shade from one of her larger face palettes that I probably have, but this one is just really convenient and I use the heck out of it. So it is gorgeous. It is a blush but it also highlights and really kind of lightens and brightens your skin and it is beautiful okay bronzer i loved the mac summer collection um i forget what it's called but this is the radiant matte bronzing powder in beijing beauty and it was from the summer collection that they put out in 2020 and this is just the perfect shade for me but i know they have some other colors i don't know if this is still in stock but I love it. I will definitely try to find, I love the finish. This is so pretty with the packaging, but I'm definitely going to try to find this particular color in the future because I am loving it so much. And a little bit goes a long way. I mean, I have been using this probably since like June or whenever it launched. And I mean, there's still, I haven't even like come close to hitting pan. All right. Now on to lip products. There were so many good lip products this year. Um, I mentioned earlier how much I love Tower 28 Beauty, and you guys, these are the lip, milky lip jellies, shine on milky lip jellies, I think, or what they're called. I love their lip jellies in general, but these milky lip jellies are so pretty because they come in neutral shades. So this color is almond, and the other shades are like coconut, um, just really like natural sounding shades, but they're so pretty. I love all four colors. I highly recommend them. They are so good. Like if you know you're gonna be wearing a mask and going in and out, so you don't wanna put on regular lipstick, but then like if you're gonna be out to eat or something or go visit a friend or a family member and you're not gonna be wearing a mask and you wanna wear, I mean, wear a mask please, but you know what I mean. Like if you're eating dinner or something. Um, these are so good because you can put it on and they're super hydrating, but they're also really, really pretty. Absolutely love. Next, 
If you do want to wear lipstick and you're going to be wearing a mask, I highly recommend the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lipsticks in any color. This shade is called Allison. I grabbed it because that's my niece's name, and so this is a little homage to her. But I love all the colors. I love wearing them. They are so good, and they will stay on, even if you're taking the mask on and off. They do dry out your lips a little bit, but they're lip lipstick. I mean, that's to be expected. Gorgeous. I'm also loving the Too Faced Melted Matte Formula. Very similar. It will stay on all day, even if you're wearing a mask. And this is my favorite red from them, um, which is called Lady Balls. I think my all-time favorite red li liquid lipstick is the Fenty Uncensored, but this is like a very close second. And then my third would be this brand new Rare Beauty. Y'all know this brand. They're brand new. It is Selena Gomez's brand. Absolutely love her. And these liquid lipsticks are good. I'm actually wearing these mixed right now, so a combination of both. Love them both. So that's it for makeup and moving on to fragrance. There were so many good, I don't know if these are all new, but they're new to me. So I am really loving this Valentino, I think it's called Donna Born in Roma. I think that's what it's called. I'll find out and then I'll link it. But it just smells so beautiful. It's sweet. I love sweet perfume, like sweet fragrance, a little floral, a little citrus, but mainly I like stuff that smells like buttercream frosting. <laughs> I love sweet fragrances, fruity fragrances. I'm not down for anything that's like um, heavy musk or I don't like as much of the like oceanic type scents or woody fragrances. I do not like anything unisex. I wanna smell like a cupcake. So this is a very good sweet fragrance. I am also obsessed with Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. It is so sweet. This one is very expensive, very overpriced, but this is a nice gift. So if you want to really treat yourself or ask someone if someone's buying you a gift, this would be a nice one to have. It is sweet. It is fruity. It is beautiful. I am also loving the Love by Killian Don't Be Shy. It smells like cake batter to me. I think it's supposed to have like orange or citrus in it as well, but I just get the sweetness and I love it. I bought the small one because I've mentioned before, I learned my lesson this year with purchasing expensive fragrances that may or may not work for me, especially if it's tricky to try to return them or you can't return them. So I bought the purse or travel size fragrance um, of this one, fell in love. I will definitely be purchasing the full size. Love it. Okay, so on to hair care. Um, this one is pretty new to me, but my hair has been so damaged. I have been on a journey the last couple of years. I pretty much cut everything off, cut off all the layers. I finally made it to the salon. I think I hadn't been to the salon from like January until maybe November. I want to say November is when I finally went to the salon because COVID kind of died down a little bit where I live. It's back up again now. As you can see, my hair is growing out. So I'm supposed to go later this month. I don't know if I'm going to keep the appointment or postpone. But anyway, I'm on a journey to try to kind of um, make my hair more healthy. I use a lot of Olaplex. I don't have them in my favorites because they're not new to me. I've been using them forever. Love them. Olaplex 3 and the oil, which I think is are my favorites um but I'm not featuring them because they're not new to me but this is and this is the dry bar jumpstart quick dry blowout serum it is so good if you are using any heat on your hair you have got to have product in it to protect it you've got to have something in there to protect your hair and this one has been really nice and it also really helps to smooth my hair so pretty new to me but I am loving it I am also loving the, okay, y'all, I don't know how to, how to pronounce this. I think it's Gisu or Giso um, hair oil. And um, it is the honey infused hair oil new to me this year. As you can see, it has been very well loved. I do have a couple backups, but um, I've, I've purchased probably three or four bottles of this this year. Loving it. I'm also loving the L'Oreal El Vive Extraordinary Oil with Camellia and Sunflower Oils. Um, 
So I had quit using anything with like dimethicone this year. I quit using sulfates. I'm really careful about what I put in my hair. Um, this does have, I think, dimethicone in it. I think it's okay in, you know, in small doses. Um, I'm not a hair care expert, but I need something. My hair is very wavy and I need something to try to keep it kind of less frizzy and like tame it. And when I wasn't using any at all, my hair was just like frizzy and dry. Um, even with like the natural oils, like the Gisu honey oil, Gisu honey oil, um, or even using like the Olaplex oil, it just wasn't doing enough. I need that little extra to kind of like keep it down. So I use it sparingly, but this one's really affordable and I'm really enjoying it. It has really made a difference. I think this and this together, oh, and I, I'll throw in a little bit of this too. Um, it's made a big difference. Like do some leave-in conditioner spray and then put in some of the oils, put in some of this serum, and then I'll put in like maybe like um I don't know, I have like this aqueous leave-in treatment, so I'll put a little bit of that in there too. And it just really, it doesn't weigh my hair down, but it really does make it look smoother and sleeker and it's starting to finally look a little bit healthier. I'm also loving my Briogeo Honey Bear. It is the Don't Despair Repair Honey Moisture Deep Conditioning Mask. It's not really new to me. Um, so I discovered this at Sephora in 2019 and fell in love, but, they quit making it like they discontinued it. It was limited edition. And so then when they brought it back the holiday season of 2020, you know, I bought one and I'm going to probably need to buy a couple backups because it smells so good. It's so cute in my shower, but it's a really good mask too. And you don't even need to leave it on that long. Like you can leave it on your hair for like 10 minutes while you're in the shower, like shaving your legs, doing whatever you're doing. And, um, that's enough for it to work. So it is so good. So cute. Oh, an honorable mention, I am loving the Briogeo Rose Oil. Um, it is so good, but I don't have one to show you because I'm totally out. So that is my honorable mention. I love this brand. They have amazing hair care. Also, you guys, okay, this is phenomenal. So I love Whey Dry Shampoo. And I think this year I've gone longer in between hair washings than ever before because I'm working from home. I love it, y'all. I hope I get to keep working from home even once this is all over because it's so much less stressful to me. I don't have to worry about the commute, finding the parking, you know, dealing with all that. Yeah, I like working from home. But um, so I've been really into dry shampoos this year and I love Wave, but you guys, they did a limited edition collaboration with Byredo with the scent Mojave Ghost, which is my all-time favorite, like all-time favorite fragrance. And so I'm kind of like backing up a little bit because I told y'all I mostly like sweet gourmand type scents, but Mojave Ghost is more like a floral fresh scent. It is probably my all-time favorite fragrance. So this was a limited edition collaboration. I wish they would make it permanent because it smells so good. This uh, bottle is almost out and I am going to cry so much when it's gone. So I'm trying to use it really sparingly. I have a bottle of the regular way dry shampoo that I've been using in the meantime, because I just don't want this to, I don't want it to end. I don't want it to be over. Love. All right. So moving on to nail polish. Um, I love Essie nail polish. They're probably one of my favorite brands and their fall collection. These are just two shades um, from the fall collection, Heart of the Jungle and Swing of Things. The fall collection was probably my favorite collection of theirs all year. Such beautiful colors. These are just two of them, but I have the whole collection. I also really love Nails Ink and I loved this set. I forget what the set is called, but it was like a neon set. It had three neon shades and then like a neutral shade as well. Such a good set. I'll link it below if it's still available. I also loved the Nails Ink Keep It Tonal collection. Just a really pretty like browns, beige, nudes collection. Just very, very pretty colors. I also love ILNP. They are one of my all-time favorite nail polishes and I loved their fall collection this year. Um, this shade is called Cursed but they have just the most beautiful holographic and glitter nail polishes. They also have some really pretty like duo chromes or trio chromes even, but they have just got some spectacular nail polishes. Highly recommend checking them out. They've got every shade you can think of. 
I also discovered a really cute indie brand called Candy Paints, and they have amazing nail polishes in beautiful colors. I love them. They are a very small independent brand. It is a small female owned, small black owned business based in Atlanta. And a lot of their colors, or maybe even all of their colors are based on places in Atlanta. So this is, um, Oh, actually, these are not named after. I <laughs> take that back, sorry. Um, but I think some of them are. Anyway, this is Shea Butter Babe, and this one is Sugar Rush, and they're just so pretty. So I have a couple different nail polishes from them. Love this brand. Okay, so I think that's it for beauty products. Okay, so moving on to books. 2020, let me rediscover my love of reading, y'all. And that is one of the biggest takeaways from the year for me. Um, you know, with work and family and kids and social media and trying to launch my YouTube and doing Sephora Squad and, you know, everything that I did in the past couple of years, I really didn't have time to watch TV or read or, you know, do things like in my spare time because I didn't have any. And so this year with staying home more, um, I really did have time to rediscover that love of reading. And, you know, I found a lot of books on my own. I found some books through um, friends, but I also follow three book clubs. One is the Bad Bitch Book Club, and that's where I purchased this sweatshirt. They have the cutest merch. I will try to link them below so you can check them out. And they have really, really great, um, diverse authors. I think pretty much all female authors. They may have a couple males in there. I don't know. Um, but mainly female, strong female protagonists in the books. That's one of the main themes. And then they have some little sub um, book clubs underneath if you're looking for specific genres. So I think it's a lot of fun. And so a lot of my top, I'll show you my top 10 books of 2020. A lot of them came from that book club. I also love Reese's book club and I love the Fantastic Strangelings book club with Jenny Lawson. She's one of my favorite authors, favorite bloggers. She is also known as the Blogess and she actually has a bookstore here in my city. So I'm hoping that once the pandemic lightens up a little bit, I can, and they, you know, have their, their grand opening, that I can actually go visit her. It is called Nowhere Bookshop. You can order books and merchandise from them online, or you can join the book club. And they actually, that book club will actually send you a book every month. So you pay a fee every month and then you, um, they'll mail you the book. So super easy. And with that, let's go ahead and jump in. So my tie for number 10, these are actually both from the Fantastic Strangelings Book Club, The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart and A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. These are both in the fantasy genre. You can check out my reviews of the books. I'm probably not going to go into a lot of big, you know, synopsis or details here, but um, I do have my book reviews up on Instagram, so please follow me there, Enchanted But Not Amused, and you can check out all of my book reviews, but these are in the fantasy genre, and they just, they were both amazing. It is not my favorite genre, other than the <laughs> Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin, who I know kind of breaks the mold because it's a male author, but he's one of my favorites. Trust me, the books are a lot better than the show. Um, so fantasy really hasn't been my genre, and I fell in love with both of these. Um, I am waiting for the sequels and cannot wait to check those out once they both launch. So check these out if you like fantasy. Number nine, this was just a really fun, heartwarming read. Ali Wong is hilarious. She is a comedian. She has a lot of specials on Netflix, I think, and she's on a couple shows. I think she's been in a couple movies. She is just hilarious. And this is her memoir called Dear Girls. And it is so funny. It is definitely um, NSFW, um, <laughs> but it was a really fun read. And it's just one of those things. If you just want something light to kind of lift your spirits, it's fun. Check it out. Then I love suspense. Suspense, thrillers, those are those are like candy, like brain candy for me. Um, love reading them. But I discovered this author, Lisa Jewell, this year, and she has a lot of heart. And this book, Invisible Girl, was the first book I read by her. And even though it's like a thriller, it was just so good. I really was drawn to the characters. I was really drawn into it. Um, it was just a great 
fun read. So I highly recommend this one. I also loved More Than Enough by Elaine Welteroff. It was so good, you guys. Um, she is just beyond inspiring. Again, I have reviews for all of these books on my Instagram. So if you want to read more, check out my Instagram, see what my thoughts are on the books. But, you know, leave me a comment below here if you've read any of these or let me know what you think about them. I also really love this one, you guys. So this is The Last Story of Mina Lee by Nancy Ju Yon Kim. I hope I'm saying that right. Such a good story. Um, it's a story about immigration to America, and it is just so heartwarming. It's a story about um, relationships between mothers and daughters, um, story of loss. It made me cry so much, but it was so good. Just an amazing story. Okay, one of the books that really kicked off my rediscovery of reading this year was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is a must read. This is a YA novel, but I think it's appropriate for anyone. The movie was so good. This is one of those rare cases where the movie was pretty much as good as the book, um, except I think the movie made me cry even more than the book did. Like it was super emotional. But with everything happening um, in 2020, with the heightened awareness of racial injustice, this is just a must, must read. And so this actually got me back into the swing of reading. I did this as a buddy read with a really good friend of mine, and I am so glad she got me back into it because I am really enjoying reading. And you guys, this one, please check it out. Okay, next is Americana by... Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I hope I'm saying that right too. This is such a good book, you guys. Um, so it's also about like immigrating to America and understanding like the differences in moving from Nigeria to the United States and just the differences in culture. And the main character in the book as a blog where she kind of has observations about the American um, culture, cultural observations, I guess. But it is just a really good book and um, super eye opening. And it was a fun story. I really enjoyed it. Okay, the next book was so good. So The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Some of these are not new books that launched in 2020, but they're new to me. Um, this is the first book I've read by this author and y'all, it was so good. It is super juicy, super scandalous. It's like a Hollywood um, coming of age type story, but it goes beyond that, tells her entire life story. It's good, highly recommend it. Um, it's a fun read, super juicy. Next, Kelly Yang's Parachutes. This was such a powerful book. It is also YA. As you probably noticed, these are all pretty much mostly fiction, minus the two, um, the Lane Welteroff and the Ali Wong book. Those are both like memoirs or autobiography kind of um, books. But this is a YA fiction book, and it is powerful. So it's fiction and it's about these um, students. I didn't even know about this, but it's basically about these students who they call parachutes, who their families send them from China, like very wealthy families will send their kids from China to private schools in California to get a better education. And these kids, like some of them live with host families. Some of them are just like put up in these beautiful mansions where they live by themselves. And it's just a totally different lifestyle, but this book tackles some really heavy, heavy, heavy topics. I mean, it's not just like high school gossip. There's, you know, some pretty deep um, triggering type topics. You can read my review on Instagram, but some of it is kind of autobiographical from the author. I absolutely love her. Kelly Yang, check her out. She has a lot to say um, on her own Instagram as well. So this was just such a good book. So this is my number three for the year. I forgot to tell you, I'm like doing them in reverse order. So I have the two tied for 10 going all the way up. So this is, oh, I'm sorry, this is number two. And then I have a tie for number one. 
but I'll list all the books down below in the caption as well and I'll rank them. Okay, so for number one, I have a tie. Um, I just couldn't choose between the two of these. These were both absolutely amazing. So the first one is Alka Joshi's Henna Artist and it was just a beautiful, beautiful, like epic level type story um, about this woman who is in India, um, I want to say it's like in the 1940s, um, but just telling her life story and it is just a beautiful story, um, very empowering, gorgeous, gorgeous imagery in this book and I absolutely loved it. My second number one book, my tie for number one, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Y'all, you need to read this one. Actually, you need to read both of them, but The Vanishing Half is so good. It is just about like, so it's basically about these twins that go their own way. They run away from home and they go their own ways and they are both black women, but they can pass for white. And so one of them lives her life as a white woman and the other one lives her life as a black woman. But it is so much deeper than that. Like it covers their families. There's a lot about their daughters. There's a lot about really a theme. There's a lot of characters in the book who have double lives. And you'll know what I mean if you read it. Check out my Instagram review. I talk a lot more about my thoughts, but it was just phenomenal. So those are my top 10. Really, there's 12 books because I had two ties, but I'll list them below. I highly recommend all of them. Um, as far as music goes, really, there wasn't a whole lot of new music this year. And to be honest, I don't listen to music a whole lot when I'm just at home, like because I'm working or I'm doing my content. Mainly, I listen to music while I drive and I stayed home almost all year. So uh, I will say that the albums of note for me were the Taylor Swift albums, Folklore and Evermore. I think Evermore just touched me a lot more deeply. I absolutely love that album. Also, anything from Megan Thee Stallion. She is amazing. And so that was kind of my, you know, that was kind of my music this year. Again, I didn't really go anywhere, so I wasn't listening to a lot of music, but love it. And then what I will do, I have my top 10 TV shows that I watched this year. I will go ahead and leave a graphic with that information for you. So check it out and let me know if you've watched any of them or what you think, but please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about everything, um, all of my favorites for 2020, what were your favorites in any of the categories, and I will leave links to shop everything below. But thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back soon.